There's a new study out from McGill University about the level of emissions from unplugged gas wells in Western Canada. And I'll be uh, interviewing one of the authors early next week, uh, and I'll include some of the the graphics at that time, so you know they help you to to understand. But uh, the I wanted to do this video while the it's in the the stories in the news cycle. Uh, CBC did a story, so uh, it usually takes a, a little longer to track down author, you know, academics and researchers get interviews. So. But in, here's the thing I want to leave you with. Yeah, okay, so se emissions are seven times higher than what were reported by Environment and Climate Change Canada in their National Inventory Report. Oh, that's, that's great. But this is only indicative of a, a much bigger problem with emissions because aside from the oil sands, which, uh, you know, because they're like factories up in northern Alberta, and you can measure emissions uh, easier that way, but when you've got hundreds of thousands of wells spread out, and that's just in Alberta, never mind you know, in, in BC and, and Saskatchewan, you got hundreds of thousands of wells. You, you, and if you're not measuring them properly, the amount of methane or the amount of greenhouse gas emissions that are being emitted, then we got a problem. And up until the last few years, you know how they used to uh, measure, measure emissions? Once, maybe twice a year, they go out to a battery and uh, get up to the well with a thermal, hand, basically a thermal gun, you know, and, and they would take a reading and that would be it once a week. Uh, sorry, once a year. And the problem with that is that uh, emissions fluctuate. Uh, you know, methane might be, uh, maybe it's uh, leaking t uh, today through a hatch and then the hatch gets closed or maybe they're venting or something. And then, you know, there's all kinds of reasons why emissions fluctuate. So if you catch it when uh, you measure it when the emissions are low, which are, is more, most likely, you're going to underestimate the emissions. And there have been more studies in the last few years that show that emissions are actually one and a half to two times higher than the official estimates. So, so this, is a, this is a real serious problem. And uh, I spent, uh, two years ago I did a, a series called uh, Unethical Oil, and part two deals with conventional oil and gas. And the issue of environmental liability, so that would be uh, wells, uh, you know, processing plants, pipelines, any kind of assets that were used in the production of oil and gas over the last 80 years, that problem is massive. And Albertans have, haven't got a clue. In fact, the, the number, uh, which comes from the Alberta Energy Regulator, the unofficial number that was released accidentally in 2018, is $260 billion dollars. And this is a problem we are we haven't got our heads wrapped around how much how big the problem is because the official numbers are uh, not nearly what as accurate as they should be, and because the capital is not being put into reclamation by the industry the way it should, and that's a whole other. Well, I'll leave that part of it for for uh, subsequent videos, but uh, here's one of the things I wanted to to say uh, that. This is, you know, I, I get so many emails and phone calls from people within the industry over the years who are working in this field, you know, reclamation engineers or, or folks who are, you know, working, some of them were former uh, employees of the regulator. Um, uh, some of them are, uh, you know, well, let me give you one example. I interviewed the former head of the Alberta Energy Regulators uh, data, their IT department, and you know this is where all the data gets collected, right? It's a nightmare. It's an utter nightmare. Uh, the the system is made up of a patchwork of different d databases that don't talk to each other. Uh, they have like boxes and boxes of paper records that they never even enter into the system. They're just sitting there. The companies collect the data and then it doesn't get entered. Dr. Kevin uh, Timoney has uh, <laughs> written a book about how badly the AER collects data. You know, like there were thousands, thousands and thousands of oil spills that never got properly recorded. They were recorded as basically all the, the oil was recovered and there was no wildlife impact and they're completely bogus. So when we get studies like this that are starting to zero in and, and you know, they're very specific and they say, okay, unplugged gas oil wells and they're emitting seven times more than the official estimates read, 
what this is a little peek behind the scenes. It's like pulling the curtain back on the Wizard of Oz. You know, you get to see how the machinery works. And it doesn't work very well in this case. It's, I mean, it's a serious problem. And then, it, so it's a, it's a problem if you're a climate activist or anybody who's concerned about climate change, because Alberta's, you know, like 38% of Canada's greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, there's no way that Canada will ever meet its targets until Alberta pulls up its socks and the oil and gas industry pulls up its socks. Then there's the environmental liability uh, part of it. And then there's the pollution and the health effects. I mean, I've talked to Mark Doran, who is a long time, he was in the oil and gas industry most of his career. Now he does administrative law for landowners. And he tells me stories about, you know, wells that weren't, weren't capped properly, wells that are leaking, uh, even in his hometown. Uh, his, his mom was, they had a, a well on their, on their property that was, a, I mean, it took decades to get the issue resolved. And for a long time, he said it was leaking uh, methane, uh, even though it, was, wasn't, it was, wasn't active. And it would, if the wind was right, it would sort of blow it over towards their house. And his mom would be out in the garden and getting exposed to this stuff. And now she's got Parkinson's, which, you know, he claims was uh, caused by the, uh, the gas exposure, methane exposure all those years. There's all kinds of stuff. Um, Dwight Popovich, a farmer in um, Three Hills, and he, he's got a well on his quarter section. He can't sell it because the company went bankrupt and there's nobody to reclaim it. And it just sits in the inactive list. A, Alberta Energy Reg, Regulars inactive list. And uh, without that well being reclaimed, nobody will buy it. No bank will lend a buyer money to buy it. And so it just kind of sits there. And, you know, he, I talked to Dwight, uh, who is active with Mark in some of these polluter pay uh, organizations. And he says, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of landowners across Alberta who have this same problem thousands. And he's, I said, well, you know, why don't we hear about it? Why don't they come forward? They go, well, they don't want to be disloyal. It's kind of, you know, it's un Albertan to complain about the oil industry. And eh, they just, you know, what can we do anyway? The Alberta, you know, the oil industry has got its, you know, all the laws on its, its side and the regulator doesn't, literally doesn't do anything. They, they, you know, they try to avoid the issue as much as they can, according to, to Dorn and, and Popovich. So this is just the all by itself it's a story but it's not a huge story the huge story is all of the other sources of emissions and all of the other environmental liabilities scattered across alberta and from what i understand uh, bc and saskatchewan aren't that much better in fact bc up in the northeast uh, part of the province where they produce oil and uh, mostly gas you know it's apparently it's a huge problem and it just, governments aren't serious about fixing it. The industry isn't serious about fixing it. And it just gets swept under the rug. And we need, you know, and here's the kicker. I'll leave you with this thought. If I'm right, if energy media is right, and we're going to see peak oil demand in 2030 and a decline between the early 2030s and 2035, then prices are going to drop. The companies won't have enough revenue to reclaim their wells properly, certainly not their old ones. And this problem is going to fall on the taxpayers. Hundreds of billions of dollars it'll cost the taxpayers to clean this stuff up. Or it'll just, the, the wells will just sit there, you know, leaking into the air or poisoning aquifers or groundwater or whatever. This is a huge problem. I, I haven't got words big enough to convey to you how big a problem it is.